Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how I make a paint tin out of cake and I'm going to have a go with the Dinky Doodle carry kit for this. So this is something that I got to sell in my shop like a little while ago and I thought I should really have a bit of a practice with it, a bit of a play around so you guys can see how it works. So I'll put a link below to this product but it is something that we have in on our website anyway. So I'm going to start by putting the plastic disc of this kit at the bottom of my cakes and I've just put a thin layer of buttercream on and then I'm gonna layer up my cake. So this is just chocolate sponge cake with chocolate buttercream in between. Now I'm gonna pile it up to a height that's not higher than my little plastic side bits. So I don't know if you guys can see the plastic side bits. These are gonna slot into the plastic base but the holes in them need to stick out above my cake otherwise the whole thing won't kind of stick together properly. Once I've piled them up I just need to make sure they're slightly um, narrower than the plastic base so that I've got space to put the chocolate ganache around the outside. So I've just got chocolate ganache and I'm going quite heavily with it around the edge and I'm just going to scrape off any extra. So I'm just using a metal scraper for this. I do sometimes ganache with boards top and bottom but for this one I thought we'll just do it with the bottom plastic one. You can put as many layers of ganache on this as you want to get it nice and smooth. Let it refrigerate for a little bit to set each layer and then just keep going over the top. Just trim any extra off the top with a knife or you can scrape it down now these plastic bits guys that i'm sticking in are gonna i'm pushing them from the bottom now when i've seen dawn do her videos she actually turns her cake upside down and i thought oh i could just do it from underneath but actually you might be best doing it by turning your cake upside down so the important thing with these is that you push these plastic sort of rod things through the holes in the bottom and you push them up straight so they shouldn't go in at an angle now i thought i was pushing them in straight when i look at this video back i can see that they are not going in straight at all they definitely went in at an angle so <laughs> learn from my mistakes push them in nice and straight it just makes it easier when we add the handle later if they're in straight if not it kind of pulls them at a funny angle and it tears through the cake just check at this stage that your handle does fit on. So mine did, but I had to kind of push the plastic bits inwards slightly for it to actually fit. And I'm just covering the top of it with some white fondant first. Now I went for white fondant because at first I thought I might have a white paint tin. I was Googling images of paint tins and I thought white ones looked quite nice. So we went with white. I should have really gone for just gray and gone for the silver paint tin to begin with. Now I've rolled a second circle of white fondant because I wanted it to look like the top of a cake, a cake tin, <laughs> not a cake tin, a paint tin. Um, and they all looked a little bit different when I looked online. I'm going to roll a second strip, but quite thin of fondant, and I'm going to place that around the second circle that I put on there, but leaving a slight gap on there. So I'm going to roll out my fondant, or sugar paste, so that it's long enough to go all the way around the cake. To do it, I usually measure just with a piece of ribbon so that I know the circumference, and then I'll just check that my piece of fondant is long enough, and also that it's tall enough as well, guys. You can cover your cake with a thin layer of water or piping gel. I went for piping gel because it's nice and sticky. And then I'm going to just carefully unroll my fondant. So I kind of rolled up that fondant and I'm going to unroll it as I put it around the cake itself. Just make sure you didn't roll it too high, otherwise it's going to flop over quite a lot. Where it overlaps, just run your knife through. There we go. And we can just rub that seam together with a smoother. Now, if you can't fully get rid of the seam, so you can see my seam still a little bit here. Uh, we can put like the paint drips coming down over that seam so it's fine. Trim any extra off from around the top and then I'm just rolling a thin piece that kind of is going to go around this top edge as well. I could have left the fondant so it was stuck up a little bit higher actually. In fact I'm now I'm going to put this on the bottom first. <laughs> I forget what I do. But you're going to put a similar piece up on the top. Again just when I was looking at paint tin cans online they seem to have like this little bit on the top edge. I should have really spent longer. Mine's not an overly neat cake, I'm going to be honest. I was a little bit disappointed with how I'd made it when I was making it. Um, but I think all together it, it looks okay. I'm st I was still fairly happy with it when, when I finished it. So we're painting it with some silver edible paint. So this is the Sweet Sticks one. Again, I'll put links below to which ones I used. And I mixed it with a little bit of dipping solution. And then I just painted the whole thing in it. So I went quite thin with it. And then while I'm letting the first layer dry... I'm gonna make a paintbrush out of modeling chocolate. So I just pre-bought my modeling chocolate. I didn't make it by hand, but you can make it by hand if you like, guys. And I'm gonna start by shaping the handle. And then we're doing the sort of brush bit as a separate piece. You could just do it all as one piece if you wanted, guys. I'm just marking where that metal bit comes to roughly. Let's cut any extra off the top. And we're just gonna put lines in everywhere with a knife. So you can go fairly deep with your lines and then some not deep. I'm just straightening off the edges a little bit there. Put plenty of lines in so it looks like the bristles 
And if you need to sort of separate them a bit with a Dresden tool, you can do that. I'm just gonna use a straw to put a hole in the little handle there. Just wanna round off the hole a little bit with my bowling tool, although I'm gonna have to go back over it with my straw. Now I notice my paintbrush has like wandering little hairs or bristles that stick out. So I'm gonna use some vermicelli, if I pronounced that right, at noodles that I'm just pressing into the modeling chocolate a little bit. But we're gonna put a strip of paste over that as well so you can't see like the bottom of those noodles. Press some lines in as well, just using the edge of my smoother, just to give it a bit of texture. I'm not gonna put the numbers on the paintbrush because I will mess that up because I'm really bad at writing. My handwriting is terrible. And then I'm just gonna texture the bottom sort of edge of the brush just with my the edge of my knife. Now I'm painting it in a slightly glossy color. So this is the black edible powder guys that I'm using and I've mixed it with some glaze. So edible glaze, so you can still eat this. Just be very careful when you're painting over that vermicelli noodles because they snap very easily. But once they're painted black, you can see they look a lot more brush-like or bristle-like. And you don't have to use glaze, but I, I just wanted to shine on it. So for the paint itself, I'm going to use pipe and gel mixed with a bit of white food colouring. Now you could use royal icing, you could use white chocolate. I thought the pipe and gel might have more of a shine to it, so it stayed looking a bit more kind of glossy paint. That just went on the end of the brush, so the brush looks like it's been dunked in paint. And I have now at this stage given my cake a couple of coats of that silver paint, but I'm going to just go over with a final sort of lustre of dry dust. So I'm using a dry powder here. This is the rainbow dust one that I'm using. Again, I'll put links below, guys, so you can see everything that I've used. I'm just brushing that everywhere. The only thing is the shinier I make it, the more obvious any like finger marks or dints and imperfections seem to become on the cake. So let's cover them up with this kind of pipe and gel drip that we've made to look like paint. It's up to you how much of the drip you want to put on there, guys. I'm just going to put a bit more on my paintbrush. And I'm going to use some light silver for painting the metal strip bit across the paintbrush. Now I had to go over this with a few coats to get it strong enough in colour. So you can go for a darker silver than what I used if you prefer. And I'm just going to try and slot that modelling chocolate brush just onto the top of my paint can. I feel like that made it look a little bit more realistic. And also I tried to put it so it looked like it was above where the paint was dripping. And I'm just going over the handle with a final layer of glaze. So it's edible glaze, guys. If you do use this, it's very difficult to get off your brushes. So make sure you've got some edible glaze cleaner to hand. And there we go. I am now going to go take this to our decorator, who's decorating the new premises for our new shop. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this video guys if any of you guys do have a go with one of these little kits that I've used or even if you guys have made paint cans in cake uh, I'd love to see what you make and you can send me images on my Facebook page or my Instagram page I'd love to see them thank you for watching and don't forget to join me again for next week's video bye guys if you like the video be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below you can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.